It's probably the easiest way to change the way your car looks and the way it handles. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to pick the right wheels for your car, including size, material, offset calculation, all that jazz. And then I'll show you how to pick the right tire for whatever it is you're doing, drifting or carving the canyons or whatever. I'll, I'll show you how to understand tires. Then we'll cover how to install them and have you off ripping nasty turns in the canyons in no time. I'm Zach and this is Money Pit. Let's do it. Let's talk tires. This is the stock wheel and tire from the Miata. And first I wanna go over all the different numbers that are stamped into the side of the tire so we can understand all the things that the tire is trying to tell us. So we'll start with the size, that big batch of numbers. The 185, 60, 14. What do these numbers mean? The first number, the 185, that's the width in millimeters. So that's 185 millimeters wide. The second number, the 60, that is the sidewall profile. It's called an aspect ratio and it's completely dependent on the width of the tire. The 60 means that the sidewall is 60% of the width of the tire. So a 60 sidewall isn't the same on every tire. It's always dependent on the width, remember that. Then you've got the last number, 14. That's the size of the hole in the tire, so you know what size wheel to put in it. So that's pretty simple, the uh, sizing. You get a nice combination of metric and imperial measuring systems, which is always fun. Uh, but then after that, there's a couple numbers and a letter. We've got 82 here. What is that? That is your load rating. Uh, basically, it's a system that operates on numbers. The higher the number, the higher the load rating. You can look up the chart to see specifically what the load rating is, but most tires say it somewhere. 1,047 pounds is the max load rating on this tires. Also, most tires will say on the tire specifically what the load rating is in pounds. So next to our load rating on the tire, 1,047 pounds, we've also got our max inflation. It says 51 PSI. Listen, that is not what you're supposed to drive on. That's just the max pressure that the tire can handle. You need to check your driver's door jam or the owner's manual for the actual pressure that you're supposed to run on the tires while you're driving. For cars, it's usually somewhere in the ballpark of like 30 to 35 PSI. Trucks, uh, large trucks often closer to 60 to 80 PSI. But if you drive on your tires max pressure, you're gonna get very bad tire wear and tire life. So anyway, uh, back to where we were, the letter on the end here, what is that? That is another rating, it's your speed rating. If you wanna go fast, you gotta have tires that can handle it. If you spend time at a speed above your tire's rating, the tire can start to delaminate and basically come apart. It mostly goes from A to Z, with Z being the fastest rating at 186 plus miles per. Uh, but if the tire is rated to over 149, they'll add a Z into the size, and instead of this just being an R, it'll say ZR. But to get your specific speed rating, you look just past the load rating. This tire is an H, which means this tire is good to 130 miles an hour. All right, so that's a big one down. Now we know how to read the size of a tire, its load rating, and its speed rating, but we are not not done yet. We've got some more DOT standardized specs, uh, the US Department of Transportation, that is. And their highway arm, the NHTSA, put forth a set of standards to measure critical functions of tires for consumers to make better, more informed decisions when buying new tires. Those standards are called the Uniform Tire Quality Grade Standards, or UTQG. They've standardized three measurements, tread wear, traction, and temperature. Let's start with tread wear. It's a bit of a convoluted one, uh, but let's talk it out. The tread wear rating is intended to be a comparative rating of the wear rate of a tire or how fast and easily the rubber will wear down. This means that the tread wear rating assigned to a tire means nothing in and of itself because it's comparative. It means that in theory, a 200 tread wear rating tire will last twice as long as a 100 tread wear tire. So that's all pretty simple, but it's important to note that the Department of Transportation is not the one conducting any of these tests. They leave it up to each tire manufacturer to conduct testing on their own tires against a standardized course monitoring tire. The tread wear rating is often honestly closer to a marketing tool than an actual consumer information tool. You'll get a good idea of the longevity of tires relative to other tires made by the same manufacturer, but don't expect a 400 tread wear Bridgestone tire to necessarily last as long as a 400 tread wear Goodyear or something else. As a general rule though, the, the lower the number, the grippier and stickier the tire will be, and some high performance tires will even rock like a zero tread wear rating because we don't care about tread wear. Anyway, the next UTQG standard is traction. And this test is a lot less fudgeable and much more sciencey. The goal with this test is to measure tires straight line wet traction. 
The way they perform this test is they stick some tires to be tested on an unpowered axle that has all sorts of sciency instruments on it. And then they pull that test axle behind a truck at a constant 40 miles an hour on wet asphalt and wet concrete. The brakes on the axle are then yanked. And as the tire skids along, the instruments on the axle measure the tire's coefficient of friction or them braking G-forces, baby. So this test is mostly about how sticky a rubber compound a given tire is made out of. There are four traction grades, C, B, A, and double A. Each grade correlates to a threshold G-force, uh, but I'm not gonna sit here and tell you those numbers because Anyway, on to the last UTQG standard, which is temperature. And it's pretty simple, although it would probably be more accurate to call it a temperature resistance rating as it measures the tire's resistance to the buildup of heat or its ability to dissipate heat at speed. When tires blow apart in chunks, like in drifting, for example, it's usually because they got too hot doing all them skids. There are three grades of temp, A, B, and C. A means that the tire can maintain a speed of 115 plus miles per hour without generating too much heat. B means 100 to 115 miles per hour. C means 85 to 100. Anything below that cannot be sold here in the USA, but pretty much every real tire being sold these days has an A temp rating. Okay, moving right along, here is something that you won't see on every tire. Uh, you can see here it says outside, because this is the outside of the tire. Sometimes it'll say rotation with an arrow, and that's because these tires uh, are asymmetric. Which doesn't mean they're not round, it just means that the tread is not symmetric side to side. Uh, and that's done for a number of reasons, sometimes water evacuation or handling characteristics. And so these tires are just an inside outside, so it really only matters for the person installing the tires onto the wheels, uh, but then this can go on either side of the car. You can't really go wrong, but for rotation specific tires, you need to pay attention to which side of the car you put them on and how they're mounted on the wheel. Uh, bonus points if both of those people are you, the guy installing them and mounting them. So let's talk dot code. What is that? Well, kind of like your car has a VIN, your tire kind of has a TIN, tire identification number of sorts. The beginning of the dot code has a bunch of seemingly random numbers and letters, which denote where the tire was made, uh, its size, and some other manufacturer specific info. But what we really care about are the last four numbers attached to the dot code. And they're only gonna be on one side of the tire, so keep that in mind. The last four digits are how we can determine when the tires were made. 37, the first two digits are the week that the tire was made in a given year. The, the given year is the last two digits. So here, 3710 means that these tires were made the 37th week of 2010, which also means they're 10 years old, which means they're way too old. General rule of thumb is that after six years, tires should kind of be retired. Over time, tires dry out and they lose their flexibility and they start to crack and they become dangerous. So you can check your dot code whenever you're looking at a car. It's an easy way to check how old your tires are. Okay, now we understand all of the big basics about tires and what they're trying to tell us, but that's only half of the equation. The other half is uh, the wheels. Uh, they're equally important in my opinion. Uh, you gotta get them right, especially if you want good fitment. So there's kind of a lot to talk about with wheels, so let's. Okay, so wheel start with the basics size because that matters this is a 14 by i think five and a half inch wheel which means that this is uh 14 inches in diameter by five and a half inches in width the wheel pretty simple right but there's another parameter that we give a shit about offset what is it i know it can be scary but let me break it down and a little bit later i'll show you how to calculate and measure your offset and what you can fit for a new wheel so you can get that fitment that you've all been lusting after so offset, it's the measurement of the offset from center. Remember that, offset from center of the mounting face of the wheel. The outside or the face of the wheel is the positive side and the empty barrel, the negative space, is the negative side. So imagine an imaginary line through the center of the wheel. That is zero. Now insert your offset. These are a plus 45. So from the center of the wheel, plus 45 millimeters, which means towards the positive side or the face, and that's where our wheel's mounting face will be. The further you move this mounting face towards the face of the wheel, and the more of the wheel gets tucked or sucked into the car, and the more weak your fitment is, obviously. The more negative you go, the more the wheel pokes out because you move that mounting face towards the inside of the wheel. And so the more the wheel pokes out and the more gangster fitment you can get. All right, how about the bolt pattern? That is the pattern of the bolts. The Miata has a four 
four by 100 bolt pattern. That means that there are four lugs spread evenly across an imaginary 100 millimeter diameter circle. So this means if you have a set of wheels with an even lug pattern, you can effectively measure from hole to hole to find out what size they are. But if you have a five lug vehicle, you have to do math because no two holes actually oppose each other. So yeah, that I guess is my interesting Thing about bolt patterns. Moving on, the last thing that we care about uh, sizing wise is the old hub bore here. And it's important because your wheel should be the right size to just slip onto the hub. That's what we in the industry call being hub centric. It means your wheel is centered by your hub. If your wheel hole is too big, the wheel will then only be centered by the lugs and that's what we call being lug centric. If you have too big of a hole, you can get hub centering rings in like a million different sizes to perfectly take up that gap and center your slabs up, which unfortunately I think we're gonna have to do. I thought I had hub centric rings for our new wheels and I don't. So we're gonna be lug centric for the next week or so until I order some rings, whatever. All right, now how about different types of wheels? Let's briefly touch on all the types of wheels in order from cheapest to expensivest, uh, generally speaking, starting with steelies. You know what they are, they're made out of steel, they go behind hubcaps and they can look cool. Next, cast wheels. Uh, it's just when you pour molten aluminum into a wheel mold and you get a wheel. Then we've got roll formed wheels, which are basically a cast blank and then they put a roller system onto that blank and they draw out the barrel, which means that they can get it pretty light, pretty strong, a little bit more than just a cast wheel. It's also a little more expensive. Now we've got forged wheels, which is basically when you take a billet of aluminum, put it into a forging die and squeeze the hell out of it to get a really strong, really dense, really light, but expensive aluminum. All right, and then we've got the gangster class of wheels, multi-piece. You've got two-piece and three-piece. The face is separated from the barrel, and sometimes the barrel is made out of two pieces. And all those different pieces can be made using various forms of the stuff that we just talked about. You can spend as much money as you want, you can get whatever fitment you want, and they look pretty sick, but they're also very expensive. All right, now that you're up to speed on wheels and tires, it's time to talk about what we bought for the Miata and why. That's right, folks. We got RPF1s, can you believe it? Very unique, I know, a set of NK RPF1s. But listen, they're one piece, they're light, they're very strong, they're made with that roll forming process that we talked about earlier, and they're basically just a great crossroads of all the things that we care about in a wheel. Uh, so these are a 15 by eight inch, positive 28 millimeter offset. So as I break down how I got to this wheel, I'm gonna install them, cause the sun's going down. Ooh! Starting to get excited. All right, so first let's talk about the diameter. Stock wheels are 14 inches, these are 15. Did that for a few reasons. One, someday we're gonna put bigger brakes on this car and bigger brakes need more room. So we went with a, an inch larger in diameter. Beyond that, tires. You have a lot more options for 15 inch tires like these. 14s, you don't have nearly as many options. Another thing with the tires is that the larger the wheel, the smaller your sidewall ends up being. So you'll get a little bit less flex with a shorter sidewall. So these will be a little bit more performance oriented. And beyond that, I guess really the most important thing of all is that they look better. They look a little bit bigger, look a little more sporty. And uh, that's kind of what we're going for, right? So these are eight inches wide and the stock ones were six inches wide. And the reason for that, the reason I wanted wider wheels is so I could have wider tires, which means I can have a wider contact patch on the asphalt, which means I'll have more grip. But the question is, how did I know that eight inches would fit? And the answer here, honestly, is mostly from the forums. I did a lot of research, read what other people had done, and I knew that these would fit. But if you can't do that, you can measure. You can have your stock wheels on the car and measure inwards to the nearest thing that you would run into. Uh, remembering that every inch you go wider will make it stick further in half an inch and further out half an inch, as long as you're not changing offset. So you can measure or you can do a bunch of research on the forums, which is what I did, and they fit. So for tires, we went with a Toyo R888R, which is gonna be super sticky. Uh, it's a 205 50 15. How did I decide that size? Well, the wheels, like we said, are eight inches wide, which translates to, I think, 203.2 millimeters. And because we know how to read a tire size now, we know that 205 means that it's 205 millimeters wide. So it's pretty much the perfect fitment for our wheel. We could have gone with a 225 on this and it would look a little bulgy. And that's kind of a cool look too, but I went with this because 
because I didn't want to have to modify the body yet. As far as the sidewall goes, the 50 series profile, we did that because it leaves us with a very similar to stock rolling diameter, the overall diameter of the tire. And the reason that you pay attention to that is because if you change that very much, then your speedometer won't read correctly because now the wheel being a different diameter will spin a different amount of times for a given distance. Okay, and then the 15 part of the tire was pretty obvious because that's the size of our wheels. And these tires are W speed rated, which is good for 168 miles an hour. So if we can make this thing do that speed, we'll be prepared. All right, that is four on the floor. But there's something we haven't talked about yet, and that is our offset. These are a plus 28 millimeter offset. How do we get to that? Well, again, the forums were super helpful because so many people have Miatas. It's very easy to find fitments that other people have done, so I knew this would work. But if you don't, you can measure and figure out how much offset you can handle. All right, so imagine, use your imagination and imagine this is the stock wheel and imagine that we remembered to film this part two hours ago when we had the stock wheels on. And basically what you'll wanna do at ride height like this is get a straight edge and go from edge to edge through the center of your wheel and then you'll measure in millimeters uh, how much gap you have from your wheel to the inside of your fender. Now obviously we're a little bit past flush because our straight edge goes out the outside of our fender, but if this were the stock wheel, we'd be far inside of the fender and we'd be able to measure from our straight edge to the inner lip of the fender and then you can see how many millimeters you can move outwards. Now that's only if you're not changing width at the same time. If you are, you have to take that into account as well. But it's very simple, straight edge, measure, and then you know. Okay, so there's another thing that we haven't talked about which we have been using and you're gonna need and that's lug nuts. Uh, so you could, in some cases, get away with reusing your stock lug nuts. We could have done that here, but it wouldn't look as cool and uh, that's a problem for us. But what do you need to know to choose some lug nuts? Not really that much. You need to know the diameter and thread pitch of your lug nuts or your bolt holes. These on the Miata are a 12, which means 12 millimeter diameter, and 1.5 millimeter thread pitch, which means a millimeter and a half between each thread. And then the other thing you need to know is your seat, the seat of your lugs. Uh, in this case, it's a cone because the shape here, which really is important about the wheel, you need to match your lug nuts to your wheels. Most are gonna be cones, but you need to make sure that you're getting the right stuff for your car. Then you put them on, torque them down to whatever your torque spec is, and that's it. That's it, that's our first official modification on the Money Pit Miata and I couldn't be more excited. We got a nice set of wheels and some sticky tires. This thing is gonna be so much better than it was already. But if you look at the car, you will notice that it sits way too high. So we have to address that next. So that'll be next week. We're gonna do some coilovers and get this thing sitting just right. So I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you're having fun. I hope you learned a thing or two. Uh, so we'll see you guys next week. In the meantime, follow me on Instagram, at Zach Job, and follow my boys that helped me make this show, at Eddie Esparza and at Tenderoni. My guys, love you guys, see you next week.